Supporters line up here at the Guelph Line QEW overpass in Burlington Thursday morning waiting for the Freedom Convoy to pass on through. Halton Police and OPP officers doing some crowd control as well. The convoy's main mission is to protest the vaccine mandate that came into effect January 15th, requiring all Canadian cross-border essential workers to show their proof of vaccination. Steve Foxcroft is the vice president at Fluke Transportation Group who's been following this story as it unfolds. He says although the protest comes from a good place initially, he doesn't support it for what it's become. But I think what we're afraid of is that it shouldn't just be about the vaccine mandate. Uh, it also shouldn't be an us versus them mentality, right? So that's the reasons why we don't really support it. So I think the, um, I think the intentions are good, but there's other issues that this freedom convoy, or let's just say a convoy could, could point their protest towards. And that's stuff like infrastructure and traffic congestions, the long hours, the tough shifts, the working conditions and access to facilities. The supply chain has been affected for many reasons besides the vaccine mandates. According to Foxcroft, he says weather has certainly been a factor along with staffing issues that has been present even before the pandemic began. We need to get the staffing levels up and people back to work everywhere along the, the supply chain, right? It is a chain and a chain is full of links along the way. So that's where it starts. Of course, in the trucking industry, we've had um, difficulty getting drivers. The young people now, our workforce is an older workforce. We're challenged to get a younger workforce in the uh, transportation industry. And that has been uh, ongoing for a while. So there's upwards of 20,000 jobs available across the country. Uh, here at Fluke, like we would, we would really like to have 10 or 15 more drivers in our work pool right now, but it's been difficult to do that. So what does Foxcroft think about this mandate? Well, he says it's certainly the right thing to do, but suggests delaying implementation. When our margins are so thin right now, and when I say margins, I'm not talking about business profit and loss. I'm talking about margins of truck drivers. You know, if you have 100 and you take 20 out of the mix, it's, it's going to cause stress to the system. We applaud the government for what they're trying to do. However, perhaps one of the things they could have done is delay it, uh, say six months or so, to allow a ramp up period and a real a notice period. Meanwhile, the Canadian Trucking Alliance has released a statement saying the majority of the Canadian trucking industry is vaccinated and they don't support the Freedom Convoy or any protest on public roads, highways and bridges as it interferes with public safety. The statement goes on to say members of the trucking industry who want to publicly express displeasure over government policies can choose to hold an organized lawful event on Parliament Hill or contact their local MP. What is not acceptable is disrupting the motoring public on highways and commerce at the border. The CTA president himself is quoted in the statement saying the government of Canada and the United States have now made being vaccinated a requirement to cross the border. This regulation is not changing. So as an industry, we must adapt and comply with this mandate. He also says the only way to cross the border in a commercial truck or any other vehicle is to get vaccinated. The convoy is scheduled to reach Ottawa Saturday for a protest in front of Parliament Hill, where thousands of people are expected to take part.